So let's talk a bit about Gamescom 2023 for Payday 3, because there are a couple of pretty big things that I was certainly very surprised by, and also quite a few things that I really, really enjoyed. If you haven't already seen my trailer reaction I put up last night, feel free to go and check that out. It's got my reaction to everything that I'm going to be talking about today. It's just today there are some things I want to give in more detail that's not with a stream in the background, and also things that I didn't get around to talking about either at all or as much as I would have liked. So this is my more refined discussion slash thoughts on everything from Gamescom. As you can tell, I'm not in attendance at Gamescom. I didn't actually know Payday 3 was going to have as big of a presence as it's had. If I did know that, I probably would have made the trip to Germany, so unfortunately I didn't. However, the Noli has been very kind enough to let me use some of his gameplay from the live stream he did earlier today, so you will be seeing that shortly when I talk about 99 boxes, which is the heist that we got our information on. So let's kick off with that, with first off, the whole ice tea cameo thing. That was the most shocking thing I've ever seen. I mean, I, you can quite clearly see it in the stream when my head darted up when you mentioned Payday. My personal thoughts on someone like Ice-T being cast are actually quite positive. I mean, this isn't the first time we've had a notable name join the Payday franchise. The one that everyone talks about is Giancarlo Esposito, Ron Pelman being a pretty big addition too with Rust. Ice-T being added, honestly, to me, seems like a pretty good choice. He's clearly someone who enjoys the Payday franchise and he's not playing himself. I know there were some people who were saying, oh, Payday said there'd be no crossovers at launch. It's not a crossover if it's not labelled as Ice-T. He's playing someone called Mac, who is an in-universe character. It's not exactly like you've got Chuck Norris playing himself in Crime Boss or something. It's not really the same thing there. So it's an interesting addition. I'm quite keen. I'm not the biggest uh, fan of Ice-T in the sense that I'm not familiar with him very much. But it's cool to see someone who's passionate about the franchise added. So for me personally... That's enough. I'm quite happy. I think he's, he sounds pretty good. It sounds like he's putting a lot of effort into the performance. It doesn't sound phoned in at all. So I'm quite happy with that, personally. As for the heist that he is hiring the Payday Gang for, 99 Boxes is the name of it. It's set at the Port of Jersey in New Jersey. And, I mean, the name is obviously a pun. I got 99 Boxes, but you get the point. Got 99 Problems. I don't need to explain it. Whatever. Point is, the heist itself... Looks quite interesting. I will admit, out of the three I've seen so far, it's probably the one I'm less interested by. Just Dockyard Heist are not usually my biggest, like, kind of intrigue. Apart from the bomb Dockyard, that was all right. You know, a lot of people love Ukrainian Prisoner. I did quite enjoy that heist, but it wasn't quite my favourite, personally. It's not one I've gone back to, so that might be a hot take. But what I will say about it is the heist looks very, very fun. Just because it's my least favourite of the three so far does not mean I dislike it. It's like saying No Rest for the Wicked is a 10, Art Gallery is a 9, and maybe 99 Boxes looks like an 8 or a 7. Like, I'm not, like, displeased by it. It looks good, and I'm quite intrigued to give it a shot. I haven't seen anything for stealth yet. No, we tried to have a go, and quite quickly screwed it up, as he would, obviously, because i do so much better. I probably wouldn't. I probably messed up about five times, let's be real with you. But I have seen him play it through loud. I've seen the gameplay trailer. Obviously, I've heard the music that's in the trailer, and it was confirmed by Gustavo Caccini that the music you hear in the trailer is the heist track, so you will hear that when you play in the heist. And I really like the look of the gameplay. The map design is very, very good. I love the whole setting around it. It's something that Payday 3 has done really, really well, having the actual surroundings of your map that you're not playing in look gorgeous. The art gallery did that in particular with the Brooklyn Bridge showing in the background. You'll see it properly, obviously, when you get around to play in the game and launch in just under a month's time but I really like the map design the visuals of it and the surroundings of the map everything there is gorgeous and the objective itself so you're trying to steal some processes and the idea is the longer you take to get them the worst value they've got. It's something as, uh, like as soon as you open the crates they're in, they begin to degrade in value. That's a really interesting gameplay mechanic that I'm quite intrigued by. It requires a good fluid team to work through the objective seamlessly. And if you start to mess up or you do things wrong or the team doesn't coordinate well, you will get less money out of it as a result. I find that very interesting. I hope it doesn't degrade so fast that it's irritating, like that it's a good balance. From what I've seen, it seems pretty good to me. But I'm very, very interested to just give it a go. And I like that we are having unique things every single time we play one of these heists. No Rest for the Wicked is kind of like your introductory bank heist. It's not necessarily like cookie cutter standard, but there isn't too much that's super unique in that heist. That's kind of like your entry level. The art gallery, you're trying to find QR codes to open every single exhibition to find specific pieces of art. That's a bit more varied than what we've seen in the past, especially with art heists. And now a dockyard heist where the longer you take in getting things out of containers, the worse the value is. I mean, you could have seen that in Meltdown for Payday 2, but we didn't. It was just, here's some nukes in bags have fun. So I like that we're getting a bit more variation and it really does put across this vibe to me that every Payday 3 heist really is going to feel as unique as they've promised, which I really, really like. I'm a big fan of that and I'm glad to see it continue. And also, 3 for 3 on stealth options for heists. I hope that continues for the rest of them. I have no idea if every single heist will be stealthable. My best guess is hopefully most of them will be, if not all. They may try and do one or two that are loud only. They may try and do one that's stealth only. I really don't know. But I think especially looking at the revival era of Payday 2 where every single heist could be done stealth or loud, I'd be surprised if a majority were not the same following suit, you know, having stealth and loud options. Because especially with Payday 3's mechanics being so fluid, 
good in moving from stealth to loud, it makes sense to offer that flexibility for as much as you create. So fingers crossed most, if not all, of the high stealth, loud, loud and stealth, both as options, because I'll be quite happy with that personally. But that's everything to say about 99 boxes. There's not too much else there until we all get our hands on it. There is a booth at Gamescom in Germany that you can play to get your hands on the game and have a try with it. I'm not quite sure how the recording and streaming principle works there. I know there is a streaming room. Not sure if everyone's allowed in or just like certain content creators. I really haven't got a clue. But if you are a creator and you want to go and check it out, go scope it out, get some gameplay. Let me know if you get some. I'd be interested to see more people play in the heist. I'm intrigued. I want to see more. I'm sure a lot of us do. But now we talked about that, let's talk about live action payday. Because I just wanted to give my thoughts for Follow the Money, which is the live action short film that we saw released yesterday at the end of Games Come Opening Night Live. For me personally, I got very heavy web series vibes from it, especially the first two episodes with them being set in a bank too. It felt very much like a more modernized, updated version of that. And just purely from a cinematography and editing standpoint, it was far superior. It looked absolutely gorgeous. I love the set designs and all the way that everything was set out. And honestly, it just makes me want more. I know that's such a cliche thing now for as a Payday fan. We all love our live action content and I'm no different, especially as someone who has made so many live action trailers as it is for like movie edits. I do really want to do one more, but I'll see. It depends on what trailer I adapt and how much more footage we get. But that's a story for another time. I really like having the live action as just another way of exploring Payday's world. And I love every little bit we get of it. And considering it's the first time we've had it for five years since Offshore Payday, it was a welcome return, and I really, really appreciated that. One thing people were debating was whether it was the actual voice actors playing the characters in the video, whether it was dubbed over. It was dubbed. I mean, it's not confirmed, but Damien Poitier did say in an interview with me once before that if you never see the masks come off the characters' faces, it's not the actors playing them in person. And also, if you look at the Chains actor, he is far too skinny. Damien is a big, tough, muscly dude. That is not Damien Poitier playing Chains. I'm telling you right now in the physical aspect. However, it's definitely all the voice actors dubbing over them afterwards. It's definitely Simon Kerr, Pete Gold, Damien, and Nicholas all doing the voices in post-production. And I have to, without singling people out, because I know it's, it's weird to do that, but I want to do this in the context of him being the newest edition. Nicholas Berglund, as I said in that stream, if anybody has any doubts whatsoever about his performance as Wolf, I really hope Follow the Money has proven them wrong. Because just from what he was saying in like the interview that I had with him, I already got a vibe that he knew what he was doing and he was going into it with a good amount of uh, preparation and talent that he could pull this character off that so many people love. If it wasn't obvious already, the dude has absolutely aced it. Just the way he did the giggles, the screaming, he was swearing in Swedish at one point, like he's got the character perfectly nailed and I think that was absolutely brilliant but that's not to say the others didn't do brilliantly because all of them had notable moments Hoxton saying not your money honey that is going to be something I quote on the regular now when I play payday I just know it It was a great quote and I really loved it but as I've said that whole trailer was absolutely brilliant I think them just chasing that one piece of money throughout was a little bit odd but as a few people have explained it could either just be a they're not leaving any money behind makes sense or b people were suggesting that it was wolf's blood on the money and that's why they were keen to get it so that they couldn't get DNA off him and that kind of thing either one of those answers I'm perfectly fine with. I wasn't like annoyed by it in the stream. I was more just like, you're braver than I am chasing that because I would let that thing go. I would be like, I've got a whole bag. Let's just leave. Let's just go. And you know what? It made for a cracking trailer and it was absolutely brilliant. And as I said, during that reaction, knowing that I have worn the same mask blows my mind. It really, really does. I'm not going to spend another like five minutes swooning over it like I did in the live stream, but just the fact that Liz gave me that mask when I got to the studio in Sweden and said, this is the new Payday 3 Dallas mask. And I was like, that's really cool. Why have you done a new mask? She's like, it's just a new mold. wants to update it to match the, like, the new game one. And I was like, oh, cool. She did confirm to me afterwards it is the same one in the live action trailer. So I, I, <laughs> brain not corresponding. The fact that I've worn the same mask is insanity and I'm never going to let that one go. That is almost on the same level as David Tennant eating a cake with my face on earlier this year. There's some weird things happening to me this year and it's very, very cool. I really appreciate it. But either way, that's my thoughts on Gamescom 2023 for Payday 3. We got a new heist look. We've got Ice T being confirmed and finally new live action content. What did you think of all of it? Please let me know down in the comments section below. I'd really appreciate to hear your opinions on this. Drop a thumbs up on the video if you've enjoyed it and as always, click that subscribe button if you are new to the channel and you want more Payday 3 content going forward. I've got plenty more things coming tomorrow if it lines up while I'm planning on doing a video just theorizing the potential of a payday Fortnite crossover because apparently that might be happening so stay tuned we'll see you there and I'm hopefully gonna have another video ready for you on Friday too I'm gonna record a few videos now because I'm having a few days off this weekend but I want to make sure you guys have got some content so fingers crossed I'll have two more videos ready for you over the next two days but apart from that thank you all for watching if you're at Gamescom enjoy it get the most of it um, and enjoy playing 99 boxes hope you love it and if not we'll all get our hands on it soon enough no doubt thank you all for watching I'll see you all soon take it easy